How, noble viewers, how is hello in Lakota, a language of the Sui language family in the North American Great Plains region? I'm Hota, the virtuous Lakota people, wish you daily bliss from the awe-inspiring splendor of nature. May you always be in Mother Earth's favor. Chief Arvo Looking Horse is the 19th generation keeper of the sacred white buffalo calf pipe bundle for the Great Sioux Nation. He was bestowed with this immense honor at the age of 12, the youngest ever. Raised by his grandparents, Chief Arvel delved deeply into the culture and spirituality of the Lakota Nation. He also witnessed challenging times for his people. This, coupled with his sacred duty as spiritual leader for the Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota Nations, inspired him to work for a profound change in the world towards peace and increased recognition of the indigenous people's beautiful way of life. Chief Arvo Looking Horse has spoken internationally, focusing on creating an energy of global unity and renewed stewardship of Mother Earth. Among his many harmonizing efforts are the establishment in 1996 of the annual World Peace and Prayer Day on June 21st, and his important book, White Buffalo Teachings. Chief Arvo Looking Horse's book, White Buffalo Teachings, shares ancient indigenous wisdom, prophecies, and warnings about this crucial time on our planet, a time that requires our clear and unwavering choice for a positive world change. Let us now read an excerpt from the eye-opening insights by the Honorable Chief Arvo Looking Horse. We are the watchers. We are the witnesses. We see what has gone before. We see what happens now, at this dangerous moment in human history. We see what's going to happen, what will surely happen unless we come together. We, the peoples of all nations, to restore peace, harmony, and balance to the earth, our mother. I honor your sacredness, your humanness. I ask you to honor mine. It's good that we meet at this crucial time, this sacred time, this crossroads in human and earth mother's history. Yes, it's good. Waste. When I was 12 years old, words of our ancient prophecies were instilled in me by our spiritual elders of that time. Those prophecies concerned drastic changes that would come to all life upon Mother Earth. These changes are here with us today. Our prophecies tell us that we are at the crossroads. We face chaos, disaster, and endless tears from our relatives' eyes. Or we can unite spiritually in peace and harmony. It's time to bring the message of the urgent need for peace, of creating an energy shift throughout the world. As keeper of the sacred Chanupa pipe in Lakota language bundle, I ask for your prayers for global healing. Our Mother Earth is suffering. Her wonderful gifts, the water, the trees, the air, are being abused. Her children, the two-legged, the four-legged, those that swim, crawl, and fly, are being annihilated. We see such atrocities occurring everywhere. Our relatives, the animal nations, reflect our well-being. The buffalo, wolf, salmon, bear, caribou, eagle, whale, dolphin, and many other sacred relatives in this fragile ecosystem are all in danger and are suffering. We, the indigenous nations, see what our brother animal nations are going through. Since we are all connected, we are all one. What happens to them happens to us. They need our help. Our voices must be heard. Our ancient creation stories tell of a great race that took place around the sacred Black Hills, Mountain Range, U.S. The race was between the two-legged and four-legged, and the two-legged one. A great council began between them to discuss how life would sustain itself from then on, ensuring balance and harmony. Another teaching told that when a buffalo was wounded or sick, the others would circle around him to help him stand. We too must do that with each other. 
many more animal nations came forward to share their connectedness with us, helping us to learn our way of life. When the Eagle Nation approached the two-legged, the Eagle told us he would carry our prayers to the Great Spirit, since he flew the highest and would bless Mother Earth with his presence when we honored him with songs. If our prayers became too short and few, he warned, he'd be forced to fly lower to hear them, traveling to places where he was never seen before, losing his boundaries. Today, when our prayers are so few and people no longer respect Mother Earth or each other's boundaries, we see the fulfillment of the warning. The Eagle Nation is now being seen in trash pits and dump sites. They've forgotten their normal flight ways and lost their boundaries. What happens to them happens to us. This new millennium will usher in an age of harmony or it will bring the end of life as we know it. Starvation, war, and toxic waste have been the hallmark of the great myth of progress and development that ruled the last millennium. To us as caretakers of the heart of Mother Earth falls the responsibility of turning back the powers of destruction. We have come to a time and place of great urgency. The fate of future generations rests in our hands. We must understand the two ways we are free to follow as we choose the positive way or the negative way, the spiritual way or the material way. It's our own choice, each of ours and all of ours. You yourself are the one who must decide. You alone and only you can make this crucial choice. Whatever you decide is what you'll be to walk in honor or to dishonor your relatives. You can't escape the consequences of your own decision. On your decision, yes, on your own personal decision, depends the fate of the entire world. We are the only species destroying Mother Earth. You must decide, you can't avoid it. Each of us is put here in this time and this place to personally decide the future of humankind. Did you think the Creator would create unnecessary people in a time of such terrible danger? My grandmother once told me to understand that every person can have a good heart, a heart big enough to change the world. She said the Great Spirit wouldn't give us something we couldn't handle. Know that you yourself are essential to this world. Believe that. Understand both the blessing and the burden of that. You yourself are desperately needed to save the soul of this world. Did you think you were put here for something less? We carry a message that has been handed down to us from elder to elder, through the generations, a sacred message of a way of life that Wakan Takan, the Great Spirit, the Great Enveloping Mystery, has blessed us with. Each generation has an obligation to pass this message down to the next. Because our word, like the breath of life that carries it, is sacred. It must always be passed down in truth. We do this in our ceremonies, our prayers, our prophecies, and our sacred teachings. In our ways, a leader has to be humble and think about the seventh generation. Every generation must consider the welfare of the seventh generation yet to come. As we turn to the four cardinal directions, we hear our ancestors in the winds encouraging us to make decisions based on generations to come. Remember, seven generations ago, our grandfathers and grandmothers prayed for our welfare, even though we weren't yet born. If they had forgotten those who were not yet born, if they had forgotten us, we wouldn't be here today. One of our prophecies warns that if there comes a time when people would wake up to each new day with continuous negative energy, it would adversely affect the path of Awak and Yeja, a sacred spirit child, coming into this world, and the new life would return back to the spirit world. We witness this many times today, when children die before they are born. Yes, we ourselves are the seventh generation, and we too must remember those who aren't yet born, the seventh generation yet to come. Free-spirited viewers, we appreciate your company on today's Words of Wisdom. 